Hello friends, welcome to the Jazz Ranch, Hip Cats and Groovy Chicks. You know, some people have asked me to talk more about lessons that I have from my book. They want me to discuss the lessons that are in my book and put them into videos. So, this particular lesson is going to be covering intervals. Also, the major scale. We're going to apply intervals to chords, which is very important, and also to melodies. But we're going to start with just applying the important intervals to specific chords that you need to learn in general for music as well as for jazz. And I have a couple of quotes for you to start. First one is from Pythagoras, the great Greek philosopher who also discovered the system of overtone series. And he said this, the celestial body, in fact, each and every atom produces a particular sound on account of its movement, its rhythm, or vibration. All these sounds and vibrations form a universal harmony in which each element, while having its own function and character, contributes to the whole. I love that quote, and it applies to this lesson, I hope. And the next one is from Edgar Cayce, and, it, and he said this, If you learn music, you'll learn history. If you learn music, you'll learn mathematics. And if you learn music, you'll learn most all there is to learn. <laughs> That's a great one from Edgar Casey. So now here we go with a lesson on beginner's lesson and then more advanced as well on intervals and how to apply them to chords and to harmony. Here we go. I wanted to do a tutorial on intervals because it's such an important part of understanding the keyboard, understanding melodic lines, and also chords. In other words, we use intervals to create chords and to create melodies. So I have talked about this in previous videos and specifically about ear training, my ear training video. But in this one I'm going to be concentrating more on showing you how intervals are created and how they are used in chords. I want to say that this video is geared more towards beginner level people, so if you're intermediate or advanced, you might want to go to part two. If there is ultimately a part two, I'll let you know. But I want to try to get through as much material as possible in this video, under 15 minutes, if I can. So if you're a beginner and just starting to learn piano, and you want to learn piano theory, which is something that will help you to play better, then you want to learn intervals, and you want to understand what they are. So here's a definition. In music theory, an interval is the difference in pitch between two notes, or two sounds. So it's the difference between this pitch and this pitch, or this pitch and that pitch. That difference is, it can be actually used in a horizontal manner, which is this way, or, or vertical, which is more arpeggiated, or melodically, like... which makes melodies. So we need intervals for both melodies, for arpeggios, for horizontal, for vertical movement, and for chords. Chords are made up of intervals, specific intervals. So we're going to be talking about that relating to the C scale, which is all white notes. So in Western music, intervals are most commonly the differences between notes of a diatonic scale. So it can be C, diatonic or F diatonic or G diatonic. In other words, the diatonic scale is the major scale. In C, there's no sharps or flats. It's all white notes. In the key of F is one flat, which is one black note. In the key of G, it's one sharp, which is that one there, F sharp. So now the, the smallest intervals are semitones. So this is a whole tone. This is a half tone or a semitone. So adjacent notes are semitones, such as these two in the scale, diatonic scale, are semitones, and these two as well. There's two semitones in, the diaton in every diatonic scale and in the C scale. So we're going to be starting with the C scale, so that easy way to see how intervals work specifically within chords. So now intervals can be complicated, particularly if you're trying to learn them in every key. But basically, they're, they're simple in, in this way that there's only seven of centered intervals you need to seven intervals you need to learn. You know, because the major scale it has just seven steps to it, then it's repeating itself. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we give the numbers to the notes, whatever scale you're playing. If it's F, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then it's one again. You see, so there's really only seven intervals within the major scale not considering any alterations, any of these black notes up here which are altered 
notes. There's just seven intervals you have to learn. So we keep it simple that way. And we'll show you how they work in chords. So I know it's daunting enough to learn this in just within one scale, but then you have to learn it above the octave too if you're going to play jazz chords. I mean the dominant sevenths, minor sevenths, those are the seventh chords are generally considered jazz chords. Triads are just up to the fifth and inversions of them. But when we get up to the seventh now we're thinking more in terms of jazz chords and then particularly above the octave. So we're here, let's just count it out. This is our major scale in C, starting on middle C. So this is, we're going to give them numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then it's one again, right? If we go above seven, we can call that eight, and we can call this nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Generally, we call that the fifth. That's just, generally, we always call that the fifth. Now, they're specific to this definition. This is a major second, because that's a minor second. So this is a major second. This is a major third, because that's a minor third. This is a perfect fourth. It's the subdominant. And the dominant is the perfect fifth. It's because they're closer in the harmonic series. I'm not going to get into the harmonic series in this video, but just to show you why the fifth is closer. This the harmonic series goes octave, then fifth, then fourth, then third, then it breaks down from there. Continuing from the perfect fifth, next is the major sixth, and then the major seven, and then the octave. This is also the leading tone to take us back to one. Now if you go above the octave, above the octave, the ninth, the tenth, the eleventh, this is the major nine, the major ten, the eleven, the twelve, which is really the fifth, we call it the fifth, and then the major thirteen. And for terminology, um, for jazz and chord symbols, we don't go above thirteen. So we're now we're using the major scale. We're just going to be using notes within that. And the first interval we're going to use is a major second. So one, two. This would be a minor second, be adjacent. So a whole step would be a major second. Now that major second can be played there. It could be played here. It could be played here. And also could be played here. But we're going to deal with just this one. Now that's a suspended two. Often it's called just a two chord. Now notice I'm adding the fifth to make it a chord. A chord has to have three notes, so that's just an interval. But I want to show you how the interval works within a chord. So I'm going to use use this one, and and I could do this one too. You could you could have that. Now you have a double suspension. In other words, suspension is just that that note is suspended over the bar and then resolves to there. That's its definition. And this could be suspended as well that note can be suspended over the bar and then resolved to there. So this is a sus4, this is a, a 6 chord, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so there's the 5, 6. 6 wants to resolve to 5 and 7 wants to resolve to 1, like that. So there's your resolutions. And this might go down to there. So now the third interval, three steps up, two whole tones, right? One whole tone, two whole tones. Or one, two, three, one, two, three, four, four half tones, semitones. This would be a minor third. This is a major third. Now to that we're going to add the fifth. That's the most common usage of the major third is a major triad, which is sort of a bright, happy sound, you know, positive sounding positive sounding chord that has melodies that fit it, have the major third in them. Now you can also have an augmented fifth, and so you'd have this major third and you'd have that major third. Well, why, why is that? You see, well, this is a minor third interval here. You know, like one, we go one, two, three, four, four, one, two, three. It's just three intervals semitone, so that is a minor. Major would be there. So if we have two majors stacked, we have an augmented chord. C augmented, that five is raised. And you can invert that and you have another augmented chord. You have an E chord with the fifth raised, or you can call that a C 
augmented chord in first inversion. So augmented chords inverted just become another augmented chord. So this is C augmented, this is E augmented, this is G sharp augmented. Back to C augmented. Now the interval of the fourth is an interesting one because it's it's a modern sound when we use fourth voicings like this. But there's your four and it's still a longing kind of sound, longing to resolve to the here. So that's your sus four resolving to to one. You now C sus four to C you know, it can be a seventh in it, even a, a, a two in it. Resolves like that, you see. So now you can stack another fourth above that, it'd be up there, but that's not in the scale. You'd have this, this fourth, you'd have this fourth, and this fourth all in the scale. Those there. So this one here could be used with this, and that would form a C2 again. Or you could have this, yeah, that fourth and this fourth. Now you'd have a C, C6. So you have that fourth interval there. Next is the perfect fifth. Now that's very majestic sounding, you know, typical of a song. It was used specifically by Richard Strauss in the tone poem he wrote called Thus Spake Zarathustra. It was used in 2001. Here, here, here's an example. Then he went. Then he went. So you see how that fifth is very strong, powerful, sounding that open fifth and they sound very unique when you play them through the cycle of fifths like maybe this that's very much the uh, Aaron Copeland sound okay so the open fifth there it's used of course with the major triad with the minor triad with the major six the minor six and with the dominant seventh and the major seventh so it's in all of those but because it's so close in the harmonic series like that, sometimes we can omit it and it isn't really that important to the sound of the chord. In other words, we take the fifth out of there, take the fifth out of there, we still have important aspects of the... We have the root, which we need, we have the third, and we have the seventh, are more important in the harmonic series, harmonic structure of a song than the fifth. But we will always use it as a filler. Now the sixth, Major six is interesting because it's another one of those tones that longs to resolve downward, like. You know, so. It's also used at the end of songs quite often, particularly in jazz, like that, to give it some color. So is the two. So the, the six and the two give the last chord color that or so you have it in the major six the minor six and also another chord the diminished now I'm using of course black notes to get these but I'm showing you that the six works well in those types of chords the C major six C minor six and the C diminished which has a double flatted seventh in it which becomes a six so so now the seventh step is the major seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sounds very dissonant. Another longing sound tension that wants to resolve to here. And that also is the leading tone of the five chord. The G7 wants to lead back to C. So that is the third. It's the leading tone of the C chord. Now within that, the most common one, of course, is the major seventh. which is a pretty sound. It's more of a WC or a modern sound than, than basic triads. Now, also you can alter this and have a minor chord with a major seven, or you can have an augmented chord with a major seven. 
but that's adding alterations. Pretty much that's the major seven that you're gonna use for that interval. So now reviewing the intervals within the octave one more time. Major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, and there's the octave. You have the suspension with the major two, you have the major triad with the major three, you have the suspended fourth with the major uh, perfect fourth, then you have the basic triad with the perfect fifth, which or you could have a minor triad, but just using white notes. Then you have the major sixth for the sixth chord and the major seventh. So it's important to know, particularly your major third, your major sixth, and your major seventh. Those are the ones that are going to be most common in most songs. So people ask me about my book, and the first thing I should say is that it's the way it's laid out, the format of it is, it's in a three ring binder. Now, you can't buy any books like this that are in three ring binders. This is unique in that way. And it's very practical because in a three ring binder, you can take any page out. Everything lies flat on the music stand. Here's the introduction. Here's about author. Here's the table of contents for volume one. You can put each volume in a separate uh, folder if you like or have them all in one folder. First chapter is on the chromatic scale. And I'm just going to show you a few pages here. Besides using the chromatic scale, I show you its application in tunes, specific tunes. So that you, not just learning theory, you're also learning applications of theory and actual songs combined. And then you learn the major scale, both its horizontal movement and its vertical movement, and notes above the octave, as well as now creating melodic phrases using the scale. So I, I try to make it as practical as possible. Then you get right into the cycle of fifths, which is one of the most important things you can learn in music theory, how harmony works, how one chord moves to the other. And then you learn the major scales and the minor scales, and then you learn in chapter two intervals, and altered intervals, and also intervals above the octave here. So, there's the first few pages, and that, there's some really important essential things you can learn. And you can see how practical the book is because it's in a three-ring binder, and it's unique that way, and uh, will, will be uh, easy to use and practical.